For this experiment, we have a mixture called panacetin. This is a mixture of sucrose, aspirin, and then a third unknown chemical. And in this experiment, we're gonna separate all three of those components from each other, and we're also going to identify the unknown substance that's mixed in here. We're gonna use about three grams of panacetin for this experiment. So I'm gonna begin by weighing the approximately three grams. Remember, it doesn't matter exactly how much we have. We just wanna be in the ballpark of three grams. Here's our starting mass. Panacetin is a mixture of sucrose, aspirin, and some unknown chemical. In our first step of separating them from each other, we're gonna take advantage of the fact that they have different solubility in a solvent, CH2Cl2, which is known as methylene dichloride or dichloromethane. Sucrose is not soluble in methylene dichloride. So if we mix our panacetin with methylene dichloride, the sucrose will not dissolve. It will stay solid. And this will allow us to filter it out and separate it from the other two components. The aspirin and the unknown will dissolve in the methylene dichloride. And we will have to separate them from each other in a second step. So now we're going to take the three grams, approximately three grams of panacetin, put it into this Erlenmeyer flask, and then we're gonna dissolve it in our solvent, which is the methylene dichloride, methylene chloride, also called dichloromethane. We need approximately 50 milliliters. The exact volume doesn't really matter. We just need to have enough that all of the components of the panacetin that are soluble in the dichloromethane are actually going to dissolve. So I'm not gonna to worry too much about getting exactly 50 milliliters in this graduated cylinder. Methylene chloride is pretty toxic, so you wanna be careful when we're working with it. Now, keep in mind that the sucrose is not going to dissolve in the methylene chloride, so we're not expecting to see everything dissolve in the solution. We know that some of the components are going to stay solid. So it makes it a little bit tricky to know exactly when this solution is done dissolving as much as it can possibly dissolve. So we're just gonna give it time, stir it quite a bit, swirl it around quite a bit. I'm just looking to see um, a point where it doesn't look like it's changing anymore in terms of its cloudiness or the amount that has actually dissolved. So one of the things that we're gonna do to make this experiment a little bit easier is pre-weigh a piece of filter paper. We're gonna be collecting our product in this filter paper and there's not gonna be very much to collect. And so we're gonna get an initial mass of just the dry filter paper. Then once we get our product in it, we're gonna reweigh it to help us calculate how much product we have. So I'm gonna start by zeroing the balance with nothing on it at all. And then we want to record this mass, the mass of the filter paper. Now we're ready to filter the sucrose out of the methylene chloride solution. We're gonna be using the filter paper that we just pre-weighed gonna fold it up a few times. I know that I don't fold this filter paper correctly. There is definitely a more glamorous technique than what I'm using here. But basically you just wanna make a lot of folds in the filter paper and get a large amount of surface area, which will help in the filtration process. Once you get it all folded up, we're gonna unfold it and put it into the funnel. We're not using vacuum filtration this time. It's just gravity filtration. Filtering this solution is a little bit tricky because we have so much sucrose in there that is not dissolved. We wanna make sure that we transfer that sucrose out of the solution into the filter paper. We don't want any of the sucrose to stick to the side of the Erlenmeyer flask, which it does have a tendency to do. So in order to filter this effectively, 
I'm just gonna constantly swirl and stir the solution the whole time during the filtration process to try to keep as much sucrose suspended as possible and prevent it from sticking to the Erlenmeyer flask. It's gonna take a few pours before I get everything transferred out, but as you can see, I'm just like swirling constantly, trying to keep the sucrose from settling or sticking to the Erlenmeyer flask. And once we get all of the solution transferred into the filter paper, we'll wait for the methylene chloride solution to finish draining out. And then we'll just take that filter paper and set it aside and let it dry overnight. And we'll be able to come back and weigh it the next day to get the mass of the sucrose that we filtered out of the solution. Now that we have the sucrose separated from the solution, we're just going to set it aside and let it dry. And we're gonna focus on separating the aspirin and the unknown from each other. Remember currently both the aspirin and the unknown are dissolved in the methylene dichloride solution. They have the same polarity. To get them separated from each other, we're gonna use a technique called extraction. So here's how extraction works. This is the aspirin molecule. I'm just gonna abbreviate it with the capital A. The aspirin molecule has a carboxylic acid functional group on it which means that it will react with a base such as sodium bicarbonate or baking soda. What we're gonna do is take a little bit of sodium bicarbonate and we're gonna add it to our mixture of the aspirin and also the unknown. The sodium bicarbonate is going to react with the carboxylic acid functional group. It's going to deprotonate the carboxylic acid functional group and form an, an ionic compound sodium acetyl salicylate. This ionic compound, because it's an ionic compound, is going to be soluble in water. So we're changing the polarity of this aspirin molecule by changing its functional group. So we're gonna do this whole entire thing in this piece of glassware, it's called a separatory funnel. We're gonna start by pouring into the separatory funnel the methylene dichloride solution. So that's gonna be the methylene dichloride. It's also gonna have the aspirin in it and the unknown is gonna be in there as well. Remember, they're all mixed together initially. And then on top of that, we're gonna add some sodium bicarbonate in the form of a solution. So this is gonna be aqueous sodium bicarbonate. We're gonna shake it up. And when we shake it up, the sodium bicarbonate is gonna do this reaction with our aspirin. It's gonna convert it into the sodium acetyl salicylate, which is soluble in water. And this means that our aspirin is actually gonna move out of that layer and move up into this baking soda, sodium bicarbonate layer. So we're gonna end up with two separate layers inside the separatory funnel. We'll have the methylene dichloride with the unknown dissolved in it. We'll have the sodium bicarbonate with the aspirin dissolved in it. These two liquids are not miscible with each other. Um, so they will stay completely separate. You'll be able to see a distinct line between the two, and then we'll be able to physically drain them out of this piece of glassware and separate these two layers from each other. Our solution has finished filtering. Um, we've got our sucrose collected right there in the middle of the filter paper. It's still pretty damp. We're just gonna set this aside and let it dry overnight. We'll come back to this tomorrow and get a mass of the sucrose that we collected. We're now ready to move on to isolating the aspirin, extracting the aspirin from the methylene dichloride solution. We're gonna use a separatory funnel for the extraction. The separatory funnel has this valve on the bottom, just like a burette. You can open and close it by turning it. This is the open position and this is the closed position. When you have it in the open position, you wanna make sure that you always have the cap off the top, otherwise it's not gonna be able to drain. We're gonna begin by transferring the methylene dichloride into the separatory funnel. We'll start with that solution first. Remember this contains both the unknown as well as the aspirin. To extract the aspirin from this solution, we are going to be using some sodium bicarbonate. Sodium bicarbonate uh, is going to serve to deprotonate the aspirin and make it soluble in water. We have a 5% solution of sodium bicarbonate in water 
We're gonna be taking about 30 milliliters of this solution. The volume doesn't need to be exact. We just want in the ballpark of 30 milliliters. And then once we get this measured, we're gonna pour it into the separatory funnel. It's gonna float on top of the, of the methylene dichloride solution. Now what we're gonna be doing next is the actual extraction process where we're shaking it up. This is going to produce some gases that I'm gonna be venting. And I'm gonna be switching to the audio so you can actually listen to the gases being vented. There's gonna be quite a bit of background noise due to the ventilation in the room, um, but just kind of bear with that and listen for the sound of the gases kind of fizzing and releasing. So one of the nice things about doing an extraction that involves the evolution of a gas is that it makes it relatively easy for us to know when we can stop the extraction process. I am just continuing to repeat the process of shaking and venting until I don't hear any more gases being evolved. And at that point, I know that I'm ready to move on with the extraction. So I'm just gonna put the separatory funnel back into this ring and allow the two layers to kind of cleanly separate from each other. Right now there's a little bit of fuzziness in between the two layers and just wanna give it a little bit of time so that we get a nice clean distinction between the two different layers. Once the two layers have a nice clear distinction between them, I'm gonna separate them from each other. The bottom layer here is my methylene dichloride layer, which I'm gonna call the organic layer. The top, the aqueous layer, that's the sodium bicarbonate solution. Organic and aqueous, pretty typical labels to use in the extraction process. So I'm just gonna place this organic beaker underneath the separatory funnel. Remember, take the top off. You can't drain the solution out if the top is on. And then I'm going to open the stopcock and just allow the organic layer to slowly drain into the beaker. Now I'm going to be repeating the extraction process with the organic layer a second time, which is pretty typical. Because I'm going to be repeating the extraction process with the organic layer, I don't need to worry about making sure that this organic layer comes out like nice and pure and clean. So as this is draining and the level is kind of getting closer down to the bottom of the separatory funnel, I'm not really worried about stopping it right at the point of the separation between these two layers. In fact, I actually want a little bit of the aqueous layer to drain into this organic beaker. I want to be really confident that the aqueous layer itself is actually pretty pure because the aqueous layer is not going to be put back into the separatory funnel and it's not going to be further cleaned up. Now that I've got the organic layer completely drained, and a little bit of aqueous layer as well. I'm gonna put my aqueous beaker underneath and just finish emptying the separatory funnel. This aqueous layer, like I said, is gonna be set aside. This aqueous layer contains sodium bicarbonate solution and also the deprotonated aspirin. We're gonna to need to convert that back into aspirin once we get this extraction finished. Like I said, it's really normal to do an extraction process at least two times. You're gonna get most of the aspirin out of the dichloromethane in the first go around, but you wanna repeat it and try to get as much as possible extracted from the dichloromethane solution. So I'm going to put the organic layer back into the separatory funnel, make sure that the stopcock is closed so that it doesn't just immediately drain right back out. We'll pour this organic layer back in. Again, this is dichloromethane. It's our unknown component of panacetin dissolved in there, and there might be a little bit of aspirin still dissolved in there as well. We wanna make sure that we get all of that aspirin out, or at least as much as possible. This second time around for the extraction process is literally exactly the same as the first time. So that means that we're gonna be using our 5% sodium bicarbonate solution again. 
We wanna use the same volume. If you remember, it was 30 milliliters. And again, doesn't need to be an exact 30 milliliters. Pour that back into the separatory funnel. Everything is gonna be exactly the same. The shaking and venting process this time around is actually gonna go quite a bit faster. We've extracted most of the aspirin already. There is very little left. So um, it's not gonna take too many tries here before I don't have any more gases being released. That is also very normal for an extraction process. The second time around is usually quite a bit faster. Just like last time, we just are going to let these two solutions separate cleanly from each other. Make sure that there's a nice clear distinction between the two of them before we start draining. The organic layer is gonna just be put right back into that same organic beaker. The organic layer, which is the layer down on the bottom, now should be just methylene dichloride and the unknown component. It looks like we have a really nice clean separation, so I'm gonna go ahead and start draining this solution. The uh, solution is not... Oh, geez. I wish, that, <laughs> I wish I could say that I did that for educational purposes, but I literally forgot to remove the stopper from the top of the separatory funnel, which kept it from draining. Um, so just like, I, just like I told you, it's not going to drain if the stopper is attached. So um, this time when I'm draining the organic solution out of the separatory funnel, I want to make sure that I don't get any of the aqueous solution in there at all. I want to have a nice pure organic layer. So I'm actually going to stop this quite a bit before the aqueous layer gets down to the, to the the bottom of the separatory funnel. I definitely don't want to put that into my aqueous beaker because that's got some organic layer in there. I don't want to contaminate the aqueous layer. So I'm just going to get this little uh, random Erlenmeyer flask and I'm going to drain all of the rest of the organic layer and a little bit of the aqueous layer into this random flask. I'm going to put that in the waste container and this is my way of just verifying that my organic layer is pure, my aqueous layer is pure, I don't have any kind of cross-contamination between the two. And once this finishes draining, uh, we're just going to be ready to move on to the next step. So now that we have our aspirin converted to sodium acetyl salicylate and we have our unknown isolated from that in its own container, we're gonna take the unknown in the methylene dichloride solution and we're just gonna set it aside. The methylene dichloride is going to evaporate and it's gonna leave us with the dry unknown. Our last job is to take the sodium acetyl salicylate and convert it back into aspirin. We're gonna do that by just simply putting that hydrogen ion back on the carboxylic acid functional group. So remember in the extraction step, we started with aspirin and we used the sodium bicarbonate to convert it to the ionic compound, which will be soluble in water. We're now gonna take that ionic compound in water and we're just gonna add some acid, hydrochloric acid, that is going to reprotonate the carboxylic acid group. This recreates the aspirin molecule like nothing ever happened to it. And this is not soluble in water. So as we add that acid, we're going to see the aspirin molecule start to form. It'll be a white solid. Once it forms as a solid, we will be able to filter it out of the solution and we'll set it aside to dry. Let's recover the aspirin from this aqueous solution. We're gonna be using six molar hydrochloric acid to reprotonate the aspirin. Um, and this is a pretty exciting process because it produces a lot of fizzing and bubbling. This is really similar to the reaction where we um, converted sodium benzoate into benzoic acid. We're just gonna be adding a lot of hydrochloric acid until we get our pH down to uh, about one. We want our pH paper, universal pH paper to be red. When we get a red dot from our solution, we know that we're in the right ballpark of pH. So let's take an initial um, pH test here and see where we're at. 
because we don't really have any guidelines for how much hydrochloric acid we should add. So we're green, which is right around a pH of seven, nowhere near where we need to be. So that means we wanna just keep adding some more hydrochloric acid. We're gonna see some more fizzing, lots of bubbling as we're reprotonating all of that aspirin. Just like with the first experiment, it doesn't matter how much hydrochloric acid we add here. We're just trying to bring this pH of the solution down nice and low. So if we overshoot it, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. Looks like we're starting to kind of form a little bit of solid. It's really foamy looking in there. Um, so weird consistency. Test our pH. This pH is getting closer. We're definitely closer to red, but it's not quite there yet. It's more of an orange color. Uh, and we just, you know, to be on the safe side, wanna make sure that we get a nice uh, dark red color. Then we know that we've definitely added enough hydrochloric acid. So we'll put a little bit more in there. That's probably gonna be enough have a lot of foaming um, inside this beaker, like forming some really foamy solid stuff on the top, which is our aspirin. Let's check the pH one last time. That, especially next to the orange, you can see that's definitely a nice red color. Our pH is down around zero or one, so we're in good shape. We don't need to add any more hydrochloric acid. The aspirin is still in the process of forming, so we're gonna place it in this beaker of ice, ice water. That's gonna help finish crystallizing and forming the rest of the aspirin. And uh, we'll let it sit here for probably about 10, 15 minutes. We are now ready to filter our aspirin. We're gonna begin by wetting the filter paper with a little bit of water to make sure that the filter paper gets a nice suction onto the Buchner funnel. The aspirin has been chilling in the speaker of ice for about 10 minutes. We have quite a bit of crystals in there, although they're really foamy, kind of weird, mushy crystals. So as I'm transferring this into the Buchner funnel, I'm going to have to work really hard to get a good transfer to not leave any of this foamy stuff behind in the beaker. So I'm going to be using my stirring rod to just kind of push everything back down into the solution and then doing a lot of swirling right before I pour just to try to keep stuff from settling back onto the sides of the beaker. And once we get everything transferred, we're just going to let the vacuum work on it for a few minutes. And then we will Set it aside and let it finish drying. These aspirin crystals, definitely hard to see because it's just a bunch of white on white, but they are, they're still pretty sticky. They're pretty fine powder crystal and definitely very shiny. We'll get a better look at them after they finished drying. Now we have all three of the components of the panacetin. They've all been separated from each other and dried out. And the last thing that we have to do is get the masses of all three of them. We're gonna start with the sucrose. Remember that at the beginning of the experiment, we pre-weighed the filter paper. The sucrose is in the center of the filter paper. And so all that we have to do now is weigh the filter paper with the sucrose and record that mass. The difference is gonna be the mass of the sucrose. So our filter paper plus sucrose is 1.267 grams. If we subtract the mass of the empty filter paper, that'll give us the mass of the sucrose. Now this is our aspirin. This came out of the aqueous layer. And so for this, I'm gonna transfer it to a piece of filter paper and we'll get the mass of the aspirin. And we've done this before, but just as a reminder, when we do this, you wanna be careful to not scrape the filter paper that is in the bottom of the funnel here because we don't wanna accidentally transfer any shards of filter paper. The whole filter paper fell out. And 
0.817 grams, that's the mass of our aspirin. Now last but not least, we have the unknown substance. So this is the chemical that we don't know what it is. This was in a solution of methylene chloride. The methylene chloride dissolved and it left us behind with all these crystals. And we are going to weigh these crystals now. Now it's gonna be kind of tricky because they're really stuck inside this beaker. And so we need to scrape them out. I'm gonna use this metal spatula to just kind of break it up. It's gonna be difficult for us to get 100% of it out of this beaker, but that is absolutely okay. And it, it flakes up pretty easily. I'll pour this out and see how much I got out. And that's our mass of our unknown.